You're watching the Western Athletic Conference here on ESPN. Opening night of the new college basketball season. We've got a good one here at Abilene Christian University. Moody Coliseum on the women's side. ACU playing host to the Southwestern Assemblies of God University Lions. As we welcome you courtside here at Moody Coliseum, Andy Penny alongside Connor Mullins. It is anticipation as the season tips off tonight. The Wildcats coming off a 15 and 15 year Southwestern Assemblies of God coming off an 8 and 20 season. But Connor wiped the slates clean. Again, a lot of excitement, anticipation as the new season tips off tonight. Absolutely, Andy. Both teams looking to start off on the right foot to begin this year. ACU had that 15 and 15 year last year, looking to improve in the WAC and move up in those standings. And for Sagu, you know, just looking to improve that win column and get to that 10 wins. New roster for both teams, new names you'll hear tonight, but veteran players for both teams as well as we take a look at our impact players tonight. ACU, it's Addison Martin, the redshirt sophomore. And for Sagu, it's Riley Lavender, the leading scorer from a year ago. Yeah, Riley Lavender, the veteran on this Sagu roster. 12 points a game last season, 33% from the field, three rebounds a game, and 73% from the free throw line. She made herself a name at the honorable mention spot in the SAC, the Sooner Athletic Conference, and then Addison Martin for ACU. 12 points per game, 53% from the field, six rebounds, 65% from the charity stripe. Definitely looking to make a bigger impact this year at the board position with some of the losses that ECU had to graduation. Martin, one of the players returning on this team. It's a roster here for ACU with four freshmen, three sophomores, including Martin. Five juniors, a senior, and a grad transfer. So there are some holes to fill, but Martin, one of the leading scorers, coming back at 12.1 12 12 .1 points a game, and Aspen Thornton as well at 12.1 points per contest as well. The Wildcats will be introduced here to the home crowd. You can feel the energy here in the building as we're about to get underway here, Connor. Yeah, lots of energy here in Moody tonight for the start of this women's basketball season. Coach Goodenough's 12th year at the helm. 82 starts between her starters tonight. A very veteran group, but it's still a young ACU team with, you know, losing Maddie Miller and some other key pieces like Malia Langstaff last season to graduation. And they filled those holes pretty well with some young talent here on the court. It's an exciting bunch. Julie Goodenough is really excited about this roster that she's put together again with four new uh, freshmen coming in. They'll have to fill the shoes, but they'll get an opportunity to get some quality minutes here early for the Wildcats who are now in their third season in the WAC. The first two seasons they finished right at 500, nine and nine both years in the WAC. 15 and 15 a year ago uh, for ACU on the season. For Sagu again last year, they were eight and 20 on the year, their preseason 10th in the Sooner Athletic Conference for Coach Sons and company. It's uh, an extensive uphill battle tonight for Sagu, but a, a chance to get their season underway against a quality competition. I know both of these teams are just looking for 40 quality minutes of basketball tonight. Absolutely, definitely looking for 40 quality minutes. And they added a new assistant coach to their team as well, and Jordan Kite, to help bring some of veteran experience to this roster and give them a chance to win a few more games this season. Coming here to Abilene just to get some quality minutes for some key players and get some minutes for their older players as well and get a chance to impress here on the floor of Moody Coliseum. And Connor, I don't know about you, but the first Monday of November, it's college basketball season, the opening night across the country. NCAA basketball, the Wildcats, the Lady Lions about to get underway. ACU will move right to left. You can see that starting lineup, as Connor mentioned, 82 starts here at ACU combined by those five starters. And Kennedy Rising will get her first start in a Wildcat uniform here for ACU. We'll get to Sagu starters in a moment as ACU in the home whites. They'll move right to left from our camera vantage point here in this first half. And an early turnover in ACU. We'll give it to Sagu, we'll call him tonight. Southwestern Assemblies of God moving left to right. First shot of the night comes from the left wing. And Chaney Chambers, a three-point shot that's no good. But Lady Lions will push. They'll get to the rim. And the first two of the night go to the leading scorer, Riley Lavender. She's got her first two tonight. Yeah, good start from Riley Lavender. Who else would you expect? Her and Clements combining on that possession to lead things off. Quality start for the Lions. Lavender, the leading scorer for the Lady Lions a year ago at 12.3 points per contest. Sagu shows a zone as AC will try to bust it. Entry pass, Martin in the paint. 
She'll find the glass in the rim for two. Similar possession to what the Lions did with the layup inside the paint and getting to the hoop. Martin posting her up down low, able to get the easy bucket. And at Addison averaged 12.1 for contest. There's a shot up by Lavender, no good. Lavender's gonna put it up on the rim. She's a shooter. And you can see the tempo right now from Macy as well. Martin on the inside has it deflected. And Lady Lions will push. Love the energy here early. Good tempo, good pace. A minute and a half deep, we're tied at two. Yeah, lots of quick movement down the court, lots of transition. Both teams had a pair of possessions and tied up right now. Kyla McMinn wears number 22, gives it to Wendy Clemens, a three-point shot. Is up and good. Clemens, the junior guard, the transfer from Arkansas Tech. It's her first three of the early season and a three-point Lady Lion lead. And our first whistle tonight. They'll go on the far side. And I believe it's Kyla McMinn who picks up the foul. Three-man officiating crew tonight. Kevin Krasuski, Ashley Birch, Victoria Francis. We'll blow the whistle tonight here at Moody Coliseum. Great start from the Lions to get that three from Clemens, who only played in a couple games last year, but is expected to be a significant contributor for Coach Suns' team this year. Kennedy rising, her first start. She wears number four for the Wildcats. Entry pass to Martin. Claire Graham will look at a three right corner. It's up no good. We'll have our first Wildcat foul. Kennedy rising, the 5'11 junior, the transfer from Highland Community College. There's a look at Julie Goodenough in season number 12 here at the helm of ACU. 214 wins for the Wildcats. Of course, the 2019 Southland Conference Tournament Champions in the lone NCAA Division I appearance for ACU there in 2019. Won her 500th game a year ago in her career. I believe this is game 838 for her tonight in steal. her career. Ashton Thornton, the steal, ahead of the defense. And blocked from behind. Great recovery. And McMinn blocks it out of bounds on the baseline. We'll set that full Sagu starting lineup. It's Clemens as well as Chambers, Lavender, McMinn, and Agar Ferris Garcia also the start. Six-foot junior forward. A sloppy start from ACU, looking to get things going on offense, but you've seen so far that it's been running through Martin down low. Kennedy rising, her first shot as a Wildcat. It's off the back of the rim. Good defensive block out and a rebound for Sagu. No second chance opportunities yet for the Wildcats. Rising shot 33% from the three-point line last year at Highland Community College. Unable to convert that one to tie this game up. Get pass and look at a three, right wings off the back of the rim this time for Chambers. It's great ball movement by the Lions, but ACU converting here. Inside, Martin shot left and short, gets her own rebound. Wildcats a chance to reset. It's a two three zone, ACU trying to bust it. Thornton will try, back rim, another opportunity though. We've seen a couple of missed threes early from the Wildcats. Not what you want to see if your coach good enough. She loves the three ball, loves to work it inside in the paint as well. There's Martin, skip pass across the paint, shot up, no good. A foul will send Addison Martin to the free throw line. We'll see our first free throw in the 23-24 season. She shot 65% from the line last year and got 12 points a game, as we mentioned, in the open. The red shirt sophomore Addison Martin out of Shreveport, Louisiana. Had a great season last year. Started all 30 games for the Wildcats. Here's a look at the head coach for Sagu. It's Michael Sons in his fourth season here for the Lady Lions. 20 and 49 in his career. A long time AAU coach. Coached a lot of very talented women's basketball players in East Texas. Martin's got all three for ACU. It's a 5-3 Sagu lead. Garcia on the inside, shot up and good, and a foul chance for a three-point play. You gotta love this start from the Lions. Getting to the line is Garcia, the addition from Spain. Man, what a start against Coach Goodenough's team. 
We see a couple substitutions here. Kennedy Rising will check out Claire Traeger, the 5'10 graduate student, the forward out of Dallas, the transfer from Binghamton. Makes her first appearance. Free throw's good as well for Garcia. It's an 8-3 Sagu lead out of the shoot. ACU really wants to beat this half-court press as quick as they can and get to the rim as quick as possible and get some good passes in. It's extended zone look here for the Lady Lions. High intensity. Traeger skip past Graham, a look at a three, left wing, she's got it. Claire Graham, the sophomore, she's gonna have to play big this year. She averaged four and a half points a game last year. Should be looked upon to pick up some of that scoring loss from a year ago. Malia Langstaff, Maddie Martin, both graduated out of the program. Claire Graham, her first three tonight. Now whistle and jump ball. Possession will stay here on the Sagu end. Yeah, what a shot by Claire Graham from Tuscola, the big country native. Out of Jim Ned, no coach good enough for a very long time. That's a big bucket from her to start her night. Clemens on the baseline. Clemens, the junior out of Allen, the transfer from Arkansas Tech. She's got it top of the key. Lavender, a look at a three right side, rattles around, falls out. See the offensive rebound extend the possession. Another steal by Thornton, her second one here in the early minutes. Left it short, but she's fouled. She'll go to the line and shoot two. Able to draw the contact at the end of that play and get to the line. Potentially tie this game up. Hey, we've got a timeout on the floor. Fast pace, first five minutes. Sagu, a two point spread as we get to our first timeout here at Moody Coliseum. Opening night of the college basketball season. Sagu, an early two-point uh, two lead at 8-2-6. Andy Penny alongside Connor Mullins. And Aspen Thornton at the free throw line, coming back out of the timeout. Good pace here in the first five minutes. Sagu shooting the basketball a little better than ACU. 3-4-7, ACU at two for eight. Second free throw, no good. Sagu has the rebound. And what a start for the Lions in this game. You can't ask for a better start if you're Coach Suns. Hopefully they can extend the lead on this offensive possession and beat that defense of ACU. Lavender on the drive, entry pass. Garcia who will kick it back out. Look at a three, Clemens. It's a long three. And Bella Earl, the junior, runs it down. ACU won for their last seven. There's Peyton Hall, first shot, the freshman first time down the floor. Peyton Hall lights it up, her first three is an ACU Wildcat. And she's been recruited to ACU since she was in seventh grade. It's been a long time coming to get her first points as a Wildcat. With no fear at all in that first shot, Peyton Hall. Now it's deflection on a three-point shot and a rebound. She'll push and transition. Being able to make plays on both ends is what you like to see if your coach good enough. Thornton a little out of control. Now a chance to run for the Lady Lions. Chambers entry pass. Shot fake, shot up. Travel though in between. McMinn just shuffled the feet before she took the shot. And turnover, give it back here to the Wildcats. Emma Troxel, the 5'11 freshman, will make her debut for the Wildcats. She wears number 24. Big time rebounder at the high school level. A lot of toughness and grit in the paint and on the perimeter. Exciting to see her in a Wildcat uniform as well. And a part of this great freshman class for ACU. There's another three, right wing, it's up and good. It's Peyton Hall, pull the trigger. Two already, two trips down the floor for the freshman. Well, she scored 50 points of her team 69 for Beaster High School in a state playoff game last year and being able to score buckets early for ECU as well. There's a breakdown in defense. Sagu able to get the entry pass. Chambers, the shot up on the left side. ACU plays with the lead though here, 13-10. Early on, Sagu had the early lead. A 10-0 run for ECU over the last minute, 45. Earl in the corner, entry pass. Martin with good position. Back in the hands of Hole on the right side. Good ball movement, first look for Troxel, it's off the rim and no good. 
AC working it inside and out. Just can't convert it there. Lions get the rebound. Julie Goodenough coach teams are not afraid to shoot the three-point shot. It's a team that shot 32.3% a year ago. 246 three-pointers made last year. And shot 761 to their opponents, 549. Backdoor cut, shot up, shot good. Autumn Moore, the junior. Chance for another three-point play. Second time we've seen that for the Lady Lions. Yeah, the junior from Lubbock, Texas, averaging seven and a half points per game last season. She plays well off the bounce, is able to score and get to the line here. Sagu team is well known for their motion offense. They love the pick and roll. We've seen back-to-back -back possessions with easy shots up off the, off the glass from the block and in. Here's Zoe Jackson to check in for the first time. Where's number 13, Jackson, the 5'8 junior. Transfer from Butler, second year here in the program. And we're waiting to see Jackson face off against one of her former teammates in Wendy Clemens, who's on the bench right now for Sagu. Jackson will run the point. Sagu still in that zone. Entry pass, Troxel, turn around, face up, shot up, shot good. Put the Emma Troxel in the ACU history books. Her first two is a Wildcat. The two freshmen linking up there for ECU. You'd love to see it if you're a Wildcats fan. Wait, no nerves at all from, <laughs> from the, the youngsters. Eight of the 15 points. A Wildcat freshman thus far. Here's a three in the corner. It's up and good. That's Kaylin Tucker, the SAC All-Freshman team member last year. Had a career-high 17 against Mid-American Christian. Martin will try to answer, right elbow, left it short. Troxel on offensive rebound, she'll go to, the, go to the line. ACU definitely the size advantage tonight. Troxel at 5'11". Of course, Martin at 6'1 as well. Part of the reason Sagu playing a lot of zone here in the early minutes. Troxel on offensive rebound, she'll go to the line. Yeah, trying to contain the size of ACU, the Division I program, up against an NAIA program. Good start for Troxel. She'll make the free throw. The freshman out of Bushland, Texas, Emma Troxel. Coach Julie Goodenough talks about Emma, an athletic forward. She can create her own shot, but shoot that three-point shot as well. Back iron on the second free throw. ACU an offensive rebound, the second opportunity. We're tied at 16. We close in the end of the first quarter. Martin, tough catch, but she's pushed from behind. Gabrielle Owens, the six-foot junior forward, pick up her first foul. And that's exactly what you want to see if you're Addison Martin. You want to get those offensive rebounds. You gave your team second chance point opportunities here in this game, tied up right now. Great start once again for the Lions. Able to force Martin to the line. There's one for two tonight. First free throws on the way, left it short, no good. Addison. Just shot 65% from that line last year. Second free throw on the way. Back iron as well, no good. Tied at 16, eight and a half minutes deep. Look at a three right side off the rim. No good this time. Or hit the front rim. Come the Wildcats. Great pass. Hall shot on the right block. No good. But she'll make her way to the charity strike. Great look, Zoe Jackson. Pushing in transition up the left sideline. Hall running the floor on the backside block. Draws a foul. That was a great look from the Lions as well on the other end. To get the three-point shot, ACU struggling in that transition defense early in this game. As we see Meredith Mays check in for the first time. Another freshman here for the Wildcats will make her debut, Meredith Mays. Six-foot freshman out of Bixby High School, Bixby, Oklahoma. She and High school teammate Gracie at Wernley, part of that four freshman look for the Wildcats. Second one, no good by Hull, tapped out of bounds. Stay here with ACU. Good to see Mays in uniform. She lost her senior year at high school due to an ACL injury. See that brace on her left knee. Graham will throw it into the backcourt. Hull will run it down. Jackson right side. 
minute left in this quarter. AC looking to finish strong with a strong offensive possession. Lots of freshmen on the floor right now. Graham a look at a three, right corner off the rim, no good. Troxel another offensive rebound, fighting hard on the inside. Sagu comes away with it. Garcia came away with the defensive rebound. Under a minute we go, first quarter. Lions playing really strong defense, just unable to convert on offense. Nearly get that one to fall. Yeah, three rattles out. Neely Tilly Bedick. Southpaw just missed her first three tonight. Graham shot fake, little contact, no call. Pass deflected, still 13 on the shot clock. Graham left corner, three ball on the way. Front rim, no good. Mays an offensive rebound. Fighting for the basketball, they'll say last touch by ACU. So the last possession of the quarter will go the way of the Lady Lions. And a big opportunity here for the Lions to potentially take the lead at the end of one. They'll hold for the final shot, 10 on the clock. Moore drives, dishes. Top of the key, Tucker, two dribbles, shot, and it rattles home, it's good. And that's how the first quarter will come to an end. The visiting Lady Lions, 10 minutes in, have a one point lead. Sagu 18, ACU 17, up and down, first 10 minutes. We'll have the second 10 minutes coming up. Ten minutes deep, it's the visitors a one-point lead as we start the second quarter. Andy Penny alongside Connor Mullins. Glad you're with us for the opening night of NCAA basketball here in 23-24. The Wildcats will go back into the paint. Addison Martin has her shot blocked. And a quick jump ball will give possession to the Lady Lions. Connor, we look at the first quarter. Give credit to Sagu there in the first quarter. They shot it really well, 47%. Yeah, they shot the ball extremely well, but they're also doing well in the defensive end, forcing ACU to the line. They're double teaming Martin down low, and ACU has only shot four for 10 from the free throw line, and they're only shooting 29% from the floor right now. Give credit to the Wildcats bench so far, 10 of the 17 points off of non-starters tonight. This here's a lot of contact, their first charge of the year. Emma Truxel will take the charge. Foul called on Caitlin Tucker driving to the basket. I'm really liking what I'm seeing out of these ACU freshmen right now, especially Holt and Troxel. They played really well tonight, and it really playing well off the bench. Troxel able to draw the charge and get an offensive possession for ACU. Thornton a look at a three. It's up and good. You're not going to hold Aspen Thornton down all night, the 5'6 junior. The transfer from Washita Baptist, the leading scorer in Division II two years ago at Washita Baptist. Last year at 19 games in double figures, four of those were 20 plus points. She can light it up in a hurry. She is a high level scorer, 34% from the three point line last season for ACU. Now whistle, and I believe another charge taken. It is Claire Graham. That'll make the head coach happy. Julie Goodenough loves the charge. If you follow the Wildcats on social media last year, there was always a post after a game. Who got their picture posted on the charge wall? Emma Troxel's there, Claire Graham's there now too here. And they're the throwing Sagu off their rhythm as well on offensive end by drawing those charges and being able to take advantage of that on the other end. Sagu continues to play the extended zone. Girl left side, entry pass to Troxel. Now Martin, 15-footer on the baseline. Earl offensive rebound. The Wildcats, new 20-second shot clock. And Earl was so great at rebounding last season. Six rebounds a game as a guard and gets another rebound there. Thornton, back-to-back -back threes. This one falls out. Troxel, an offensive rebound. Back up and in. Boy, I tell you, Connor, you can see the depth. Julie Goodenough was really excited about this freshman bunch. and So far, they have answered the call. Emma Troxel's got five here in the first half. She said it has, right. has potential to be one of the best in ACU history. And so far, signs are looking up. Another call, another charge. Third charge taken here in the quarter. Two minutes deep. Well, ACU's just throwing Sagu off their rhythm. They now have nine points off of turnovers. Troxel getting those rebounds on the last possession for ACU, getting those second chance points as well. Garcia the foul 
for the Lady Lions. ACU's opened up the quarter on a 5-0 run. Troxel will try to add to it. She's fouled. And she immediately knew that was a bad shot to take as you see the expression on her face. But able to draw the foul nonetheless. This foul on Caitlin Panuko. Riley Lavender back on the floor. Lavender again the leading scorer a year ago. Just two points here in this first half. And Troxel the freshman out of Bushland High School, just outside of Amarillo. First free throw back iron and no good. ACU has struggled from the free throw line tonight so far. Hopefully they can correct that down the stretch if your coach good enough. It's four of 11 thus far, make it five of 12. And the Wildcats' largest lead here in the first half, now at five. Bowles got seven, Troxel's got six to lead the way. Big possession here for the Lions to hopefully convert after a few shaky last few possessions. Lemons with the dribble, Thornton will cut her off. Lavender, six on the shot clock. Whistle, and I believe a reach here on ACU. Boy, bailed out 25 seconds deep in the shot clock, bailed out the Lady Lions. Bella Earl picks up the personal. That shot clock was going down very quickly. Sagu cut it close there, but able to extend the possession. Three ball on the way, that's more. it's off the mark. Bella Earl a chance to push. Wildcats start to find a little rhythm here in the second quarter. Three minutes deep on a 6-0 run. Martin, nice drop step to the baseline and uses the left hand for two. Got to get Martin to a rhythm if you're ACU. That's a good, good possession for her there. Down low, spins around the defender and puts it in. And a 30-second timeout here for Michael Sons and the Lady Lions. Media. We'll extend it as well. It's an 8-0 run to start the second quarter. ACU has their largest lead of the night. They lead by seven at the break. It's an 8-0 run to start the quarter here for ACU. 25-18 that they lead in the uh, last two for Addison Martin, a nice drop step there at the baseline. Connor, AC is starting to get in a rhythm here in the second quarter. They absolutely are, and it's all to the benefit of Emma Troxel, the freshman from Bushland, able to help AC get that 8-0 lead to start this quarter. Wildcats really extending their defense here. A look for Lavender. It's off the front of the rim, and it'll go out of bounds on the far side. Wildcats have taken three charges here in the quarter. Defensive intensity is really pushed up, and what was a good first quarter of shooting for the Lady Lions has started to cool off. Just 0 of 3 in the quarter, but it's three shot attempts, four minutes deep. And it's those series adjustments that AC was doing that's throwing Sagu off their rhythm here. There's the first shot for Gracie Wernley, the freshman who's in for the first time. Wernley wears number 22. It's up no good, a foul here on the Wildcats. Addison Martin will pick up the foul. And Wernley's mom was a basketball star at Oklahoma State a few years ago. And, and uh, Wernley won some state titles with Meredith Mays, who we saw earlier. So all the freshmen getting minutes to start this game. Clemens with the dribble. He'll work the left side. Chambers back to Clemens. Wildcats to a little zone. Deflected pass. Stolen, but Trox will step on the near sideline. Starting to see the length in this 2-3 zone. ACU just able to get hands in passing lane, deflect passes, and create turnovers. Absolutely, they're wearing down that Lions offense. That's a great play by Troxel, and it would have been an even better play had she stayed in bounds. But another breath of fresh air for the Lions to get an extended possession. This couple players check in for ACU. Claire Traeger back on the floor, as well as Peyton Hole. Sagu looking to get their first points of this quarter. Four minutes deep, still zero here in the quarter. Led by one at the end of the first. 8-0 run here by ACU to start the second. 
Lavender picked up by Martin. Lavender with the dribble, spin move to free throw line. Drop step, shot partially blocked out of bounds. And now they'll say last touch by the Lady Lions. Lavender screaming for that ball. Does not get the call from the officials. And Lavender's trying to say that ball was partially blocked out of bounds by Martin, but the official says, no, nope, Lavender just lost it on her way to the bucket. Thornton, pass left and hole. Entry pass too tall and over the head of Traeger. And Hole and Traeger will get that figured out as the season moves along. It's just an opening game. You got a lot of time to correct those passes and work it in down low to Traeger. Three new Wildcats on the floor. A little contact. The officials let it go. And the shot up and good by Kyla McMinn. McMinn, the junior out of Royce City High School, east side of the Metroplex. Another three. Wernley, no good. Hull, an offensive rebound. Up strong and good. Peyton Hull, a team leading nine points here in the first half. ECU, their largest lead again here in the first half at seven. Yeah, the 5'11 freshman guard from Pister really making a name for herself early. Really a rangy offensive player. Knows how to put the ball in the basket. Chance to run for the Wildcats after the steal. Martin ahead of the defense. Addison Martin turning defense into offense. Points off the turnovers. Nine-point lead. We're seeing that transitory offense for ACU really work right now and throwing the Lions rhythm off balance once again. Lavender three, left side, too strong, and Hull's got a rebound. Wildcats really pushing now. Good catch, Wormley on the right side. Has poked away from behind. Ball's loose, a little sloppy play here for both teams. Sagu a chance to set up the offense. A lot of tempo for Macy's offense. Chambers a three, left side. That's a big time shot from Chambers. And now a whistle and a timeout ah, here for Julie Goodenough as well. 32nd timeout. Wanted some personnel changes. First game of the year, I think you're starting to see some. Some need their, need their breath, and we'll take the break. 29-23, ACU by six. ACU a six-point lead, 12 points off of turnovers here in the first half. Here's a good look at two of them right here, Connor. Yeah, run out for the Wildcats. Aspen Thornton to Martin down low, gets the easy two for the Wildcats. Sagu staying close. Chaney Chambers a three-point shot. It's back to a six-point game. Peyton Hull going to try to answer. She will. The freshman, her third three here in the first half. Hull's into double figures. Wildcats a nine-point lead. And it's going to be hard to keep Hull on the bench if she continues to perform at this level. Check that. She's just got nine. Nope, check that. She's got 12 here in the first half. So four added. for four start. Clemens trying to answer, and she does. Back-to-back -back possessions with three-point shots for Sagu. And now she Clemens is on the court with Jackson, her former high school teammate, for the first time. Wardley will get one up on the... Net and her first two is a Wildcat. I believe all four freshmen already in the scoring column. A shot up, no good. Late whistle and a foul call. Lavender's taking a lot of contact down low. Nearly got that one to fall, but it's going to stay with Sagu. ACU four for their last four. Fallible. He called on Traeger. I see Brooke Jessen in for the first time, the senior forward. 6'1 senior forward. Out of Spirit Lake, Idaho, the transfer from UTRGV. Another three on the way, no good. Offensive rebound, put back, falls out. Fight for the rebound. Jessen's got it in her hands. And that's where you see the length of ACU really work well for them as they transition to offense. Whistle and charge here on ACU. Paul a little out of control. She drove to the bucket and dished into the corner. Lavender there to take the charge. Yeah, Lavender giving ACU a taste of their own medicine. As we saw ACU take a couple charges against Sagu. Now Lavender gets it back for her team. 
the senior leaders. Earl and Graham back in. Zoe Jackson on the floor with Traeger and Jesse. Bobcats have the eight point lead. Their largest lead's been nine. This is a whistle and standing on the sideline is Chambers. I feel like it's been a while since we've seen a slow offensive possession like that. Very methodical approach there. Now ACU gets a shot at it. Sagu led by one at the end of the first. ACU's on the second. Here's a three. It's up. It's good. Claire Traeger. Traeger the transfer from Binghamton. We've seen some ACU grad transfers have success in recent years, like Jamie Bon Aarons and Malia Langstaff. Now a chance to run with the steal. Traeger, entry pass to Jackson. And nobody touched it. The two teams would trade turnover. She wanted that one so bad. She would take it back if she could. Trying to feed that ball down low, just can't get it there. Wildcats up to 45% shooting here in the first half. 13 of 29. Six. Three-pointers made, six of 15. That's coach good enough basketball right there. Pick and roll into the hands of McMinn. Trap dishes out Lavender. Long three-pointer left side, front rim. And a whistle coming up over the top is Garcia. Hustle foul for Garcia, trying to tap the rebound loose. And it seems like in the last few possessions, the Lions haven't taken high quality shots. They put up some long threes. They stepped out of bounds on that last three. And it's been a slow quarter for them. Only eight points, Stacey's 20, and the Lions are 0 for 4 in their last four possessions. Foul puts ACU in the bonus. We'll walk the floor, shoot free throws. Traker will make her way to the line. We'll see Tristan Keller for the first time here for the Wildcats. 5'8 sophomore out of Mason High School. Her second year with the Wildcats. Traeger at the line. Free throw no good. There's been a downside here, Connor, this first half. It's been the charity strike. Absolutely has been. ACU now five for their last 13. Second one on the way, a back rim as well. And Earl now up over the back. Bella Earl the foul. And Traeger was a pretty good free throw shooter at Binghamton. 75% from the line by misses both there. And we'll walk the floor, shoot free throws on the other end. Both teams now in the bonus situation. Just back and forth here to end this half. The Gar, you know, the Gar Ferris and Garcia at the line. Clemens leads the way for Sagu with six points. Chambers has five. Tucker also has five. And the Lions continue their prominence from the stripe. Three for three to start tonight. And Garcia is a part of that massive junior group for Coach Sons' squad. There's ten juniors on his team. Second free throw short. Wildcats have possession. Outland pass saved in by Traeger into the hands of Earl. Three on three opportunity. Wildcats decide to set up the offense. Traeger a three, right side, back rim. Issue fighting for the rebound. And a second chance. Earl will take a three, right side. Jackson, her off offensive rebound. She'll go up strong. Misses the shot, but she's fouled. She'll shoot two. One of the smallest on the floor here, Zoe Jackson at five foot eight. Able to get the offensive rebound, get to the charity strike. Quick passes from ACU, lots of tempo on the offensive end, quick shots, trying to catch the Lions off balance. Jackson in her second year in a Wildcat uniform. In the transfer from Butler. Zoe scored her career high in the season opener a year ago versus Howard Page at 22 in her debut as a Wildcat. And she's in the scoring column here tonight, two for two at the line. And she's a very good distributor as well. Had um, over an assist a game last season, but knows how to pass the ball and move the ball well and take the ball up the court. 12-point Wildcat lead, their largest here in the first half. McMinn. Trying to get that pick and roll game going. Now Moore has it in her hand with a screen coming left. Jump stop, shot from 18. It's off the rim, no good. McMinn, an offensive rebound. And almost a steal. 
Now a deflection and a steal. Jackson's got it. Shot clock's off. Will the Wildcats hold? Jackson on her way to the bucket. Gives it out. Graham, 14 on the game clock. And ACU looks like they will hold for the final shot. Trying to space it out. Make sure they get a quality look. Jackson with the dribble. Penetrates. Up off the rim. No good. Jackson an offensive rebound. A putback. It falls short. That's how the first half comes to a close. ACU outscores Sagu 22 to nine in the second quarter. Our halftime score, the Wildcats a 12 point lead at 39-27. The season opener here in 2023-24. Halftime on the opening night of the college basketball season. The Wildcats a 12 point lead, it's ACU 39 and Sagu 27. Back court side here, Andy Penny alongside Connor Mullins and Connor is really the tail of two quarters. Sagu came out of the uh, out of the gates hot, had a one point lead at the end of the first quarter, but ACU outscores Sagu 22 to nine there in quarter number two. And really, it was defense that led to offense and a 13 point spread. Absolutely, AC scoring 15 points off of 11 turnovers for Sagu, and Sagu shooting 46 percent in that opening quarter, 25 percent in that second quarter. AC able to flip the script in that second quarter and get some really high quality looks get to the basket and Peyton Hole has been amazing for the Wildcats as well with 12 points leading the way. Eight different Wildcats in the scoring column led by Peyton Hole as you mentioned and I love it. Four of the veterans that are in the scoring column, four of the newcomers are in the scoring column. It hasn't taken long for this group to mesh as the new Wildcats here at 23. Definitely, and they shot 31% in that opening quarter. It was a struggle, you know, against the Lions team that came ready to play. They shoot 50% in the second quarter, able to extend that lead to 12 here at halftime. Very strong start in that for ACU in this game. 20 minutes down, 20 minutes to go. The Wildcats back on the floor. The second half is about to get underway, and ACU will have a 12-point lead when we come back here to Moody Coliseum for the second half. Oh, it feels good to be inside playing some basketball. The opening night of the college of basketball season. ACU, a 12-point lead as we get ready for the second half. Andy Penny alongside Connor Mullins. Again, it was a Sagu one-point lead at the end of the first quarter at 18-17. But ACU opened up the second quarter with an 8-0 run. They've extended it out to a 12-point lead here at the break. Peyton Hull has 12 points. Addison Martin has seven. Emma Troxel has six. Four for Aspen Thornton. Three points apiece for Claire Graham and Claire Traeger. Two points apiece for jo Zoe Jackson and Gracie Wernley. Wendy Clemens leads the way for Sagu. She's got six in the first half. Caitlin Tucker has five. Chaney Chambers has five. Riley Lavender, just two points in that first half, Connor. Yeah, one for eight from the four. Didn't take very high quality looks. Hopefully she can get going in this half. She took 359 shots last year to get to that 12 points per game. But you need to get her going in this half if you are the Lions, if you want to get crawl your way back into this one. Starting five on the floor for the Wildcats, including Kennedy Rising. Rising just played four minutes in that first half after starting. But she is on the floor with Earl Thornton, as well as Graham and Martin. Saigu also their starting five. As Lavender gets it in to Clemens, who dribbles on the right side. Wildcats starting a man to man here in the second half. Lavender will try to get things warmed up here in the second half. She'll drive to the bucket and make the free throw. Shooter's going to shoot. You got to let her. You got to let her shoot. Got to get her down low. Get her some high quality looks. Get her confidence back up at the end of this game. And that's a great start for Lavender to open this half. She averaged 12.3 a year ago. She's got four. Bella Earl looks for her first three tonight. Front rim on the three-pointer, no good. AC Eight. shot 38% from the three-point line in that opening half. Reverse layup partially deflected by Earl. Ball's tapped around into Bella's hands. Thornton into the front court, all the way into the paint. Great pass, Martin Hull. We'll get the nice, friendly Moody Coliseum roll. It's up and in. It was a great find by Thornton. Got to give credit to her on that play. Just working it down low. Gets the ball to Martin and puts the easy two in. Back to the 12-point spread, the largest it's been tonight. 
McMinn gives to Clemens. Three on the way around the rim, falls out. Fight for the rebound. Tapped out by <laughs> the Wildcats, Earl and Martin, both fighting for it. Yeah, just some miscommunication there. They'll get that worked out as the season goes on. New 20 seconds on the shot clock here for the visiting Lady Lions out of Waxahachie, Texas. Just south of Dallas, they're on I-35 East. Lavender, right wing, See work the pick, the pick and, and roll. roll again. Yep. Yep. Chance for a three, Chambers off the rim. Rebound tapped into the hands of the Wildcats. Kennedy Rising has the basketball. Again, eight Wildcats in the scoring column in the first half. 23 of the 39 first half points were by new members of the roster. Martin has it here, skip past Thornton, a look at a three left wing. Graham, an offensive rebound, she'll put it back up and in. Well, that was a great look from Thornton, but Graham forces her way inside to pick up the offensive rebound and get the easy bucket. Back on the other end. Chambers a three in the left corner. That was quick yeah. ball movement by the Lions to find it in the corner, just unable to get some help defense from rising there to close out. 11 point Wildcat lead. AC will try to bust the 2 3 zone. Thornton left side. Entry pass to Martin, tough catch. Back to Graham now. Great look. Thornton left wing. You better not leave her open very long. Aspen Thornton buries one. And she's not going to miss that for a second time, able to bury that one with a no-look pass from Graham. The all whack newcomer team a year ago, her first year at ACU. Trying to answer and does as Chambers. Back-to-back -back threes, she's got eight. It's raining threes here in Moody. Love the pace here in the first game. Sometimes you see the pace start to wane in the first game just because of legs and game shape, but not tonight thus far. Chance to get back with single digits here for the Lady Lions. Big possession for the Lions. Lavender down the baseline, too strong. Whistled on a foul. And Riley Lavender will shoot some free throws. A strong cut to the basket. Able to pick up the foul. Tell you what, Connor, we, we got here tip at 6 o'clock. We got here about 4.30. Yeah. Riley Lavender's been in fifth year since about 4.30. <laughs> right from the jump. She's impressive. High motor, veteran on this team. Dominant scorer in the Sooner Athletic Conference last year. First free throw is good. Gracie Wernley back on the floor as well as Peyton Hull. Hull the only player in double figures for either team. Peyton had 12 in her debut here for the Wildcats. And Troxel yeah. getting ready to check in as well. Lavender's second free throw rattles out. Offensive rebound, it's Garcia. Keep the possession alive. She's got it the left wing. Itchy pass knocked away and stolen by Martin. Well, the 40. Lions need some rebounders on this team with the losses of people like Taylor Mavrosic last year. And Thornton another three. Top of the key. Well, that thing hit the back of the rim and just died and rolled in. Aspen back to back three. She's into double figures with 10. You'd love to see that if your coach is good enough. You got to get your all wag newcomer player going. There's a drive, too strong on the layup. No good. And possession here back to ACUs. You mentioned Troxel back in here for the Wildcats. Back-to-back -back threes there by Thornton, again with 10. She was in double figures 19 times a year ago. Boy, the combination that we're seeing, Thornton can light it up. Hall has proven in the first 20 minutes to light it up. Martin on the inside. Oh, I love the depth here in game number one. Especially at the guard position, Grace, you lots of depth and lots of talent. Entry pass finds Troxel back to the basket. Back to Wernley, now to Thornton with the dribble. Good dish, Troxel to Martin, extra pass. Shot up and good. Phenomenal ball movement from Coach Goodenough's squad. Everybody getting a touch on that ball in that possession and able to convert the high quality shot. And now a whistle and a Sagu timeout. Coach Sun wants to take a timeout and talk things over. 5-15 left in our third quarter play. It's the largest lead for the Wildcats. They're up by 15 halfway through the third.
right, getting a little dance in here here at Moody Coliseum, feeling good. Opening night of college basketball. ACU has their largest lead here at 51-36. And Connor, really ACU starting to uh, take over on the inside, points in the paint, rebounds, et cetera. It's helped get this 15-point spread. Absolutely, they're 10 for two in second chance points and out rebounding the Lions 27 to 17 in this game. Definitely using the size and the length to their advantage. It's been the three point shot for the Lady Lions here in the quarter. Lavender will try to get one here. I think the ball is partially deflected. Because of that, it doesn't hit the rim. It's a shot clock violation. Well, we saw a great offensive possession with AC moving the ball around well, and now we see a great defensive possession as well media to force line. the shot clock all the way down. Got our under five media timeout here in the third quarter. Wildcats on opening night, a 15-point lead. Three Wildcats in double figures. Aspen Thornton, one of those back-to-back -back threes here in this third quarter. She's so good from long range, able to convert that one. AC with the 15-point lead, and Thornton getting the double digits tonight. Three for six from downtown. And the junior transfer from Hot Springs, Arkansas. Transfer from Washita Baptist, a leading scorer in Division II two years ago at 23.4 points a game. She's got her first double figure game tonight. She's got 10. Martin has 11. Hull still leads the way with 12. 15 point Wildcat lead. And Thornton is now 30 points away from 1,000 all time at 970 on her career. Hull is on the floor. Lady Lions showing a little man to man defense this time down. Martin with some contact and a foul. Chambers has eight to lead the way. She and Lavender both with eight. Lavender's come to life. So Riley just had two points in the first half. She's got six here in the quarter for eight total. Foul will send Addison Martin to the line. She'll shoot two. And Martin struggled from the line tonight, just one for four. Able to hit that one. Red shirt sophomore from Shreveport for Julie Goodenough's Wildcats. Started all 30 games a year ago, a medical red shirt her first year here on campus. Two for two at the line this time. And she's taken over the leading scorer category now with 13. It's a 6-0 run for the Wildcats. AC won a 7-0 run over the last minute, 52 and four for their last four. Driving in with the left hand, Bedick, and missed it. Tristan Keller has checked in. She'll dribble up into the front court. Hull, Troxel top of the key. Entry pass deflected. Troxel gets it back. Thornton on the drive. Contact, shot, good. Whistle and a foul. Chance for a three-point play. She is so good down low to get that ball into the bucket. She knows how to score very well. A high-level scorer can score in all three phases. Able to get the layup to fall there and get to the line. She gets Tilly Bedick on her back hip. On the dribble penetration, just gets to the glass and gets it up and good. Chance for point 13 for her. Back rim on the free throw. Meredith Mays on the floor. The freshman from Bixby, Oklahoma, and she has the rebound. 55-36, largest lead of the night. 16 to nine run in this quarter for ACU. Definitely want to get your freshmen some valuable minutes tonight. Got an entry pass, Mays with the left hand, gets it up and good. And Meredith Mays, her first two points of her Wildcat career. 21 point spread. All the freshmen contributing tonight. Lavender around the right side. Three-point shot. Front rim this time from Chambers. Garcia will give the Lady Lions another look. Second chance points opportunity for the Lions. Tucker on a drive. Left it short. Whistle. Charge call. Fourth charge taken by the Wildcat defense tonight. It's Troxel who takes the charge. Her second one tonight. 
Lions just over over their last four, scoring throughout the last three and a half minutes. AC just throwing them off their rhythm offensively, just can't get anything to fall right now. Tucker will get a breather. Clements is back in. Traeger and Jackson for the Wildcats. Jackson dribbles in the backcourt. Guarded by Clemens, number three. Clemens and Jackson High School teammates at Allen High School. They're in the Metroplex. Both on the floor here tonight. Pass deflected and stolen away. It's a good defensive stop for the Lions. Clemens left side out by the timeline. Tries to hand it off Garcia. A little contact and a foul call. I believe Hull will pick up the foul. Always fun. You know it's a, we always say a fraternity on the men's side. I guess a sorority in the, the <laughs> basketball world with the days of AAU these days and summer teams. They might be on separate teams now, but you know there's so many connections between those that play basketball in the Absolutely. basketball circuit. It's a reverse layup. It's up and good. Garcia, a chance for a three-point play. Great cut to the basket by Garcia. Gets the layup up and in and gets herself to the line as well. Garcia dribbled with the right hand, reverse layup with the right hand, never used the left hand, I don't think, to control it. Just cuts That's around it. hole the freshman and gets to the hoop. All right hand. Hold the foul. Again, Garcia a chance for a three-point play. Free throw rattles home. Garcia's got five tonight. Lions now a full court press yeah, from the Lions. Extending their defense. Jackson in the front court. So 17 on the shot clock. Double screen coming left. Traeger, a look at a three. And it's up and go. The ninth three pointer tonight by ACU. Traeger's got another one. She's got nine. Two for three from downtown. The only shots she's taken tonight. Garcia able to get a layup, and now a steal on the defensive end. The hustle there by the junior. Now tempo. Three-pointer up. Too strong by Tilly. Tilly Bennick, and a foul out by the half-court line. Lots of hustle plays being made by both teams right now. I believe the foul on Bella Earl. Bella in a little bit of foul trouble. Your fourth tonight. Hole has four. Earl now, I believe, has four. You see on the screen there for the first time, Ile Exposito Perez, 5'7 junior, wears number five. She'll get her first opportunity on the floor. Average 16 points a game at Trinidad State last year, all conference and all defensive honors as well there. And she's a smart player. Smarty in the classroom as well, was valedictorian at Trinidad State. She knows how to do well in the classroom and on the court. Cannot be me. <laughs> Canary Island, Spain in the transfer from Trinidad State. It's free throw by Garcia, up and good. Garcia also from Spain, transferred from University of Colorado at Colorado Springs. And Garcia, another free throw. Missed that one short. Lady Lions keep possession with Clemens. We inch close to the one minute mark here in the third quarter. Garcia on the baseline. Just six on the shot clock. Garcia in the corner. Don't know if she sees the shot clock. Shots up, partially blocked. Shot clock violation, second one of the quarter. AC playing really strong defense, suffocating defense as well, forcing the shot clock to wind all the way down and go back on the offensive end. And now a full court press once again from the Lions. Traeger works with Perez in the back court. And Traeger playing a point forward position as well. It's a little bit interesting. Ball poked away from behind and stolen. Clemens right side, Chambers. About a 10 second difference, shot clock and game clock. 
Garcia with the left hand, spin move with the right hand, shot up, left it short, no good. That's good defense and from Wernley. Outlet pass to Traeger, two on two, left handed shot. No good, but a foul. Claire Traeger on her way to the line. It's great defense down low from Wernley going against Garcia. Garcia did spin around a hole, not able to do so against the other ACU freshman in Wernley. And now Traeger heads to the line. Had some outlet passes available, but cuts to the basket and draws the contact to get the foul. Traeger making her way back to the Lone Star State after four years at Binghamton. The Bearcats. She averaged 8.8 .8 assists per game last year. Oh, John Stockton-esque. Double figure scoring 10 times. Led the team in rebounding 20 times. All around player. Second free throw is up and good. Traeger's got seven tonight. Yeah, just one for four from the free throw line. Final possession of the third quarter. Moore with the dribble. One second to work with. Shot at the buzzer. It's up. A whistle, though, and a foul call. Foul right at the buzzer, and Bella Earl might have just fouled out. All right, man, you're going to catch score more than 60 points tonight. If so, that's a really unlucky night for her. We'll see. I thought we might have free throws here at the end of the quarter. And we'll check. We'll be right back after the break. Thank you. So prior to the timeout, a foul was called. And with .5 seconds on the clock after the review. So two free throws coming here for the Lady Lions, still in the third quarter with half a second on the third quarter clock. First free throw by Autumn Moore is good, a chance for another. And Moore's second free throw is good. So two more points here in the quarter. And now the third quarter will come to an end. It's a 17 point lead here for the Wildcats with 10 minutes to go from Moody Coliseum. Crazy finish there to the third quarter nonetheless. 10 minutes to go tonight from Abilene. Sixty-one forty-four. 44, 10 minutes left to go tonight. Andy Penny alongside Connor Mullins, the whole ACU TV crew. Chris Jared and company back in the studio. Wildcats shooting the basketball well. Eight of 11 there, Connor, in that third quarter of play. Phenomenal third quarter of basketball for ACU. Three for five from the three-point line as well to extend their lead to 17. Addison Martin up strong for a defensive rebound. Three Wildcats in double figures. 13 for Martin, 12 for Hull, 12 for Thornton. Hull will drive in, shot up too strong this time. First miss of the night. What a strong rebound by Mays. And hole back up and in. You'd love to see the freshman duo going at it. I think it was Rising who had the offensive rebound. Got it back to hole. Wrong, yep. And Peyton says, I'll take the leading scorer opportunity back there with the bucket. And free throw is back iron and no good. There's been a downside tonight. It's been the free throw shooting. ACU just 10 of 22 from the line. Perez at the top of the key with the guard of Clemens. Clemens with the dribble right side. Screen coming back left. Really good ball movement here from the Lions. Working Tilly, it out to the wing. Tilly Bednick, really been quiet tonight, is Tilly Bednick. Entry mm. pass here, but shot clock violation. Third one of the second half. Wow. Just taking too long to put a shot up. Bednick hesitated, but thought she was going to put it up there. But she was one of the leading scorers on this team last year, had 9.2 points per game. But it had a very quiet night, 0 for 3 from the floor. Perez, her first shot tonight. Back iron on a three, top of the key. Long rebound into the hands of Tilly Bednick. Perez was a 36% three-point shoot at Trinidad State. Panuko! Three-point shot, right wing. 
Yeah, the native from Whitney, Texas, the sharpshooter. Definitely looking for her to contribute to the offense this year. And now a chance to run with the turnover. Clemens decided to set up the offense. Sack with a lot of credit. They hung tight tonight. Played really well. Playing tough physical basketball, making ACU make sloppy plays and extend their offensive possessions. Clemens a three left side. Does not hit anything, so it'll go out of bounds on the baseline. Yeah, Clemens just taking that one from way too far out. Probably needed to work it inside and move the ball a little bit better. Hall will try to hit a three. Front rim no good, fight for the rebound. And they'll say last touched by ACU on its way out. 63-47. Wildcats have a busy home stretch to start the year. They're right back on the floor on Thursday as Rice comes to town. Then again next Thursday versus Angelo State. First three games of the year are here on the home floor. And then they get to go on the road to Towson and Navy, but then they get to come back home for the start of WAC play. Starting earlier this year, we're going to highlight that a lot this year. A lot for of ACU basketball. A lot of contact here and a foul, I believe, called on Autumn Moore. Moore got up underneath Bella Earl. And the foul will go there on Moore. Moore's just her first foul tonight. Thornton back on the floor here for the Wildcats. Great ball handler for ACU. You like to see her back out on the court. Got 12 tonight, four for nine from the floor, three for six from downtown in 21 minutes. Three assists and a rebound, that's her name as well. I think the officials might take a look at this one. Conversation with Coach Stones on the far side. And now a conversation with Coach Goodenough on the far side. I mean, Coach Stones has to be happy with this team's effort tonight. After an eight and 20 year last year, we were five and 17 in the Sooner Athletic Conference, and seven and 15 the year prior. They haven't been around very long, only since 2019, but definitely making a name for themselves tonight. Earl trying to get in the scoring column, and she will, a three in the near corner. Bella Earl, her first three. The junior, third year in the program. Started all 24 games a year ago, started tonight. She's got her first three here tonight. Their first points of the game. She already has six rebounds. Clemens tries to get her going. Yeah. Tries to answer. No good. Rising the rebound. Bella's got it again in the front court. All the way in. A lot of contact. She puts one up on the rim. She's fouled. And free throw is coming here for the junior. Yeah, from Denton Geyer. She was a McDonald's All-American nominee for senior year of high school. A high motor player. Been very reliable for Coach Good Enough in this team. Two-time WAC Freshman of the Week during our freshman season. Shooting 57% from the line last season. Left this one short, no good. Boy, just 10 of 23 now from the line. The flip side of that, Sagu, 8 of 11 at the line. Sagu just 34% field goal percentage now tonight, or ACU inching close to 50. She'll make the backside here. It's a 20-point spread for the Wildcats. Now Martin with a steal. Again, a hand in a passing lane to flex the basketball and the steal. Here's a three, top of the key from Rising, too strong. And hold on the offensive glass. Entry pass, though, stolen away by Clemens. Chance to run here for the Lady Lions. They've got numbers. Into the corner, the southpaw, Telly Bedick, too strong. And Thornton here for the Wildcats. As you see the tempo rising quickly for ACU. Thornton all the way, the rim too strong and no good. A second chance, holes three, right wing, no good. And bodies on the floor and a whistle. I believe we have a foul here on Martin. You're starting to see a little bit of that first game. You know, the stamina here in the fourth quarter, a little sloppy here in the last three, four minutes. We open up this fourth quarter play. Got to utilize your depth for these opening games. Make sure you don't get any injuries. Make sure your team stays healthy. 
and you work up to that full 40 minutes. Clemens into the front court. Sagu works the perimeter. Here's McMinn. Underneath the basket, reverse layup, no good. Offensive rebound, a putback, no good. But Moore is fouled, and Autumn Moore, more free throws. Yeah, Autumn oh. Moore from the line last year was very reliable. 79% from the charity stripe as Hole checks out of the game. Or rather, we'll just talk to Coach Good Enough for a sec. Chaney Chambers back in for Sagu. More from Lubbock Cooper High School. Chambers who just checked in from Abernathy High School right outside of Lubbock. So some West Texas flavor here for the visitors tonight. A little closer to home. They're still two and a half hours from good old West Texas in Lubbock. Second free throw back iron and no good. So 0 for 2 trip. Thornton into the front court in a hurry. Five and a half to go tonight. Graham a look at a three left side. Troxel offensive rebound, missed the first time. Fouled though, free throws coming. It was a great look from Thornton out to Graham on the perimeter. Troxel working it inside, gets the rebound, gets the put back and draws the contact. I really like what I'm seeing out of the freshman for ACU. Troxel now with four rebounds. AC one for their last eight. The scoring drive on both sides over the last three, four minutes of this game. Troxel a chance to shoot two here. She's two for four at the line tonight. Make it three for five. She hits the first. Another West Texas native. As we said, Bushland High School right outside of Amarillo. Second one, no good. Brooke Jessen, an offensive rebound. Brooke had just come in there at the break. They see another possession. Zoe Jackson finds Troxel. Earl right side, five on the shot clock. Graham driving in, kicks to Jackson. Three, left corner, no good. It's an air ball, it's a shot clock violation. ACU just taking too long in that possession. They had an opportunity to extend the lead, get more points on the board. Unable to do so. Lots of ball movement there. Lots of good passes, just not any high quality looks. So we go under five minutes tonight. The season opener for both teams here on the opening night. College basketball around the country. Lavender back on the floor, a lengthy breather for Lavender. Hadn't seen her in the fourth quarter until now. There's Moore again, shot up and good at the shot clock. Moore's got seven. He's had a good last couple of minutes, getting to the line, getting the shot there to fall. Just an entry pass, Troxel, great pass, great finish. Jessen, the senior, Troxel, the freshman. And Jessen had a career high against ACU in the opening round of that WAC tournament in 2022 to knock ACU out and gets the dish there to Troxel. Foul on the inside, Zoe Jackson will pick up the foul as we have gone under five minutes here tonight. Our final break here on the opening night. ACU a 21 point lead, four minutes to go. Final four minutes here from Moody Coliseum tonight. Opening night of college basketball 23-24 season. And they see you a 21 point lead as Lavender will miss a three coming out of the timeout. Still no Lady Lion in double figures. They have a barrage of players with eight, but nobody in double figures yet. Clemens has eight, Lavender, Garcia. Chambers all with eight points. And a whistle and jump ball call here. 
possession will stay at the Wildcat. He's just been dominating the offensive glass in this game, 18 to nine, to give them a 40 to 26 rebound margin in this game. And they extend the possession once again due to an offensive rebound. Troxel take a three right side, too strong and no good. Rebounds in the hands of Garcia, has it de deflected, poked away from behind. Jackson penetrates and loses possession of the dribble. Sagu to push. Sagu, preseason pick 10th in the Sooner Athletic Conference. There's a long three, that's off the rim, no good. But they get the yeah. offensive rebound to extend their possession, get a second chance opportunity. Pick and roll. Lavender right side, long three, no good. And a foul will go the other way. Yeah, Sagu picked 10th in the Sooner Athletic Conference. I'll tell you, Connor, from what I've seen tonight, if that's accurate, the Sooner Athletic Conference is pretty deep because I think Sagu's <laughs> got a lot of talent and upside. They absolutely and do. Absolutely do. They got 30 points in that poll. The ninth place team got 38 in UNT Dallas. Definitely looking to climb the standings this year after finishing five and 17 last year. Coach Suns in his fourth season. They added a new assistant to his to his uh, coaching staff as well, and Jordan Kite. Yep. This brings some depth and some veteran leadership. Guy who knows the game of basketball. They played well tonight at opening night. Foul here on the Lions will put Gracie Wernley at the line. Freshman out of Bixby, Oklahoma. And first free throw is good. ACU pick sixth in the preseason WAC poll out of 11 teams. New Mexico State, Sam Houston State no longer in the WAC. It's an 11 team league. 20 conference games this year as every team will play the home and home schedule. Last year, a little bit of an unbalanced schedule with 13 teams, but down to 11. 20 conference games, which starts early, November 29th. Just three weeks away from the first conference game versus UT Arlington. You better lace them up tight in a hurry. Yeah, that'll be a big opening night for ACU. Lavender misses the three, but another chance. So penetrate this time, contact block call this time. Claire Graham went for the charge, didn't quite have her feet set. It was a close call there by the refs, but Lavender draws the blocking foul. So ACU with just five non-conference games prior to conference play. We mentioned the first three here at home. Tonight, Rice on Thursday, Angelo State next Thursday. On the road during the Thanksgiving holidays. Coach good enough does not like that call. Still talking to the ref about that one. Trip out to Annapolis, Maryland in the Naval Academy. A little tournament, two-day tournament. Games versus Towson and Navy. The team will fly out on Thanksgiving Day and play on Saturday and Sunday at Annapolis. And then conference play starts Wednesday the 29th versus UT Arlington. Lavender hits the second free throw. She's got nine. 22 point lead with 2.20 to go. Wernley a quick three off the mark. Tempo from the Lions looking to finish this game strong. Lavender picked up the pivot foot. She's yep. called for the trap. And the ref was all over that one. Lavender didn't think she picked up her foot but did. Now Perez checks in for Jackson. Ailey Perez back on the floor. Good opening night tonight for ACU. Learned a lot about their team. Sagu pushed them well, I would say, for a first game. Lady Lions had the lead at the end of the first quarter. ACU picked it up. Nice entry pass again this time. Troxel to Mays. And Mays will put it up off the glass and in. Well, the newcomers have been the story for ACU tonight. They did very well in this game. They got 23 of their first 39 points in that half, that opening half. 
And they finish strong as well as we see Mays, Perez. And here's Max get a nice bucket. Pick and roll for Garcia. And Garcia into double figures. She's had a very efficient game. Yes, she has. In the first line to get there, Garcia with 10. Lavender, nine. Chambers, eight. Clemens also with eight. A foul here in the backcourt. Lions not going down easy. They're fighting for every single ball they can. Trying to get as much out of this game as possible in this last minute 17. A foul on Chambers. Troxel a chance to get to double figures here. ACU 14 of 28 from the line. First free throw off the rim and no good. Three Wildcats in double figures thus far. Hull with 14, Martin 13, Thornton with 12. Troxel's second free throw is good. Make it four in double figures. Emma Troxel with 10. 75-52 with 110 left. Three off the mark, no good by Tucker. And good strong Ooh. rebound here by Mays. Makes you looking to close this one strong. Still er very early in the season, but a good opening night nonetheless. Tristan Keller, a three left side. It's off the rim, no good. And Perez has the offensive rebound, and it's up and good. Her first points yeah. as a Wildcat. But Perez in the scoring column and a 25-point spread now. Quick three by Lavender's off the mark, and ACU, yeah, about a six-second difference game clock to shot clock, but Wildcats will close this one out. Mays picks up her fourth rebound tonight as well. Working it down low. He's got it in the paint, has it poked away. It's loose. And Lady Lions, one more push. And I believe Lavender stepped on the far sideline. Turnover number 20 by the Lady Lions tonight. Connor, good win tonight. It had moments of flashes. Obviously some sloppiness in game number one, but at the end of the night, good open here for ACU. You can't ask for anything better than a win in this one. Definitely a strong start for ACU for this season as they transition into another home game on Thursday night against Rice. That'll be a big time matchup. Four and double figures tonight. It started slow again, give Sagu credit. They had the lead at the end of the first quarter at 18-17, but AC really took off a 22 to nine quarter there in the second quarter, had a 12 point spread. They double it here in the second half, and then some 25 point finish, 77-52, good win tonight. Absolutely, shoot the ball well as also at 43% from the field, 31% from three point land. But the free throw line was a struggle for them. 15 of 30, if they're able to put a few more of those away, that's a big time win for the Wildcats, it still is. 25 point win on opening night here for Coach Good Enough to open our 12th season. 11 Wildcats in double figures tonight, or not in, in the scoring category, four in double figures. So good nights uh, in the scoring category tonight. And we're pleased to be welcomed here Ooh. by one in double figures, the leading scorer tonight, Peyton Hull, 14 points in her debut here for the Wildcats. Hey, there was ice in the veins. You were ready to go first trip down. You, you hit a three. Tell me about your first experience as a Wildcat. Um, it's been great. Um, the first game, I, it's just chills down my spine. Um, the first three I made, I was just like, oh, I'm shooting it. I'm making everything. Um, yeah, but it's been fun overall. Well, congratulations on the 14 points. Tell me about this Wildcat unit. And of course, the first game, you have some veterans, you have some newcomers, but it, it felt like y'all gelled really early. Tell, yeah. Talk about the camaraderie of this team. Um, we all really just know each other, I think, with the short period of time we've been together. Um, but I feel like we all know our strengths and weaknesses. And I think um, we're just a good overall unit team. And I think we'll do pretty good this year. And looking ahead, you have two more home games. Rice will be here on Thursday. It's yes, a quick turnaround, but uh, another opportunity to play here on the home floor. How was it on the home floor? And, and are you excited about doing it it's again? It's been great. I'm so excited about doing it again. Um, yeah, but 
it's been overall pretty good. Oh, yeah, awesome. Thank well, you. Hey, 14 points. Congratulations. Yes, It'll be a night you remember for a long, long time. Yes, and sir. and uh, congratulations. Go celebrate with Thank your you. team. Peyton Hall, the freshman from Peaster, Texas, 14 points on the night to uh, lead the way for the Wildcats again. 25 point victory tonight, 77 to 52, back on the home floor on Thursday versus Rice. This has been a production of ACU TV and ESPN Plus. For Chris Jarrett, Connor Mullins, and the entire ACU TV crew, I'm Andy Penny. Till next time, good night from Abilene.